Hi, my name is Candace Kim, and my project is on research on reconstructing the diets of some contents of Hypnotopus mexicanus netzeni in Oahu by performing necropsies and using DNA metabarcoding. So Hypnotopus mexicanus netzeni, otherwise known as the Hawaiian stilt or Io, is a subspecies of black neck stilt that are threatened and endemic to Hawaii. While black neck stilts are native to mainland North America, Io remain within the Hawaiian islands, traveling between them. From 1800 to the 1900s, Io were over hundreds at the point of endangerment. As of 2021, the population remains low, standing at about 1,500 to 2,000 individuals. Although the subspecies has been downlisted to threatened and is seemingly on the rise, many argue that the population remains generally unstable and is at risk of dropping again due to a lack of habitats or hunting spaces. Io typically live and hunt on wetlands across the islands. They nest near embankments and, are, and reportedly hunt in the water for their prey. However, many of these wetlands are no longer viable places for Io, as they are either overpopulated or have been made unusable due to urbanization. Io are actually considered a keystone species in the wetlands, meaning that they play a crucial role in their ecosystems. They define the ecosystems, meaning that the absence of Io would dramatically affect all species living in these wetlands. In other words, because Io is at risk, the species living in these wetlands are all at risk as well. However, Hawaii wetlands are already at risk due to urbanization. So since human settlement in the, in the islands, 15% of all wetland area in the state has been lost, with strikingly 65% in Oahu alone being gone since pre-settlement. As a result, Io and many other species that depend on wetlands are struggling to survive. Io have reportedly been known to hunt prey such as beetles, bugs, fly larvae, snails, and crustaceans. If referring to the diets of similar species, such as Hypnotopus hypnotopus or, or the black wing stilt, it is possible that Io may also eat diatoms and seeds, or simply just eat anything that is small enough. While their diet range seems broad, some of these types of food can only be found in areas like wetlands. So we decided to utilize this information to determine whether the lack of wetlands is a cause of their low population, setting their diet to see if specimens that we've collected have consumed the prey that they are known to eat. For the study, we performed necropsies to collect the stomach and intestinal samples we needed. Necropsies, otherwise known as autopsies, serve as a way for researchers to understand the cause of death of the specimen. The information gathered from the necropsy to help, can help to give broader insight on the state of other individuals like the specimen studied. For this specific study, we received six IO cadavers that were collected between August 2020 and November 2022. So when performing a necropsy, it is necessary to take information from both the pre-dissection and dissection stage. In the pre-dissection stage, we first determine the date of death, the specimen finder, and the location they were discovered at. We then looked at factors like freshness, oil, entanglement, and fractures of wounds, as well as the state of the feathers, legs, and beak. We use these forms to keep track of what we notice throughout the process. Uh, when dissecting the IO, we made sure to take note of the breast muscle, subcutaneous fat, and intestinal fat to figure out if the specimens were malnourished. Afterwards, we removed the internal organs and set aside the stomach and intestines, extracting the contents and preserving the organs and alcohol. Our next part of the study was to use DNA metabarcoding. DNA metabarcoding is a process in which a collected DNA sample is evaluated and processed to produce a list of species that were found in the traces of the specimen. Rather than typical DNA barcoding, metabarcoding gives up multiple species rather than focusing on only one. The first step of DNA metabarcoding is DNA extraction. Using the stomach and intestinal contents collected during the necropsy, we broke down the contents and cells to expose the DNA, isolating it from the additional substrates. Then we performed PCR, or polymerase chain reaction. In this process, we amplified or produced copies of the small segments of the DNA. Then in DNA sequencing, we ordered the nucleic acid sequence or the order of the nucleotides in the DNA. We specifically used the moon ion sequencing method. Following that, we then used the basic local alignment search tool, or BLAST, to find regions of similarity between the sequences, helping us to identify the species in the samples. After performing the DNA metabarcoding using arthropod and fish primer, we were able to retrieve 43 arthropod species, but zero fish species. In evaluating the samples that were able to be blasted, only meteoris were found in all six. Meteoris are parasitic wasps. 
According to the amount of reeds retrieved, 48.6% of them were from the Meteoris genus, which are parasitic wasps, while 31.3% of them, of them were of the Herpetogramma genus, which are moths. Both results are plausible for wetlands, but are not exclusive to them. So due to the lack of fish species present in the samples, as well as certain information gathered during the necropsies, such as air pin wing, and a lack of fat and muscle, it is likely that Io do lack wetlands to live and hunt in. It seemed that several of the specimens experienced vehicular trauma due to internal bleeding and broken bones, and have consumed pieces of metal and plastic that are more present in human populated areas. So my advice to those who are planning to do future research is to look into the diets of Io and how that influences the reproductive health. In a, similar um, in a similar study done in New Zealand, it was discovered that low traces of that um, many diets of stilts lack calcium, and that lack of calcium can interfere with um, bone formation as well as shell formation for when they reproduce their eggs. So I'd like to um, give my acknowledgments to Dr. Heirenbach, Mrs. Kobayashi, Dr. Chan, and Mr. Hill, and my parents for all their support during my project. Thank you so much.